My name is Santoshi Pizupati. I am a freshman at the International Community School in the Lake Washington School District. My focus is on understanding how a Snowtail site works. Snowtail stands for Snowpack Telemetry, or transmitting data about the snowpack to water resource managers. Here is a map of Snowtail sites in Washington. As you can see, a lot of Snowtail sites are concentrated here in the mountains because this provides valuable data about snow levels at these high altitudes. Water managers use data from these snow toll sites to make crucial decisions that ensure that all of the people in our region can be guaranteed a dependable water supply all year round. We totally depend on this data. Each snow toll site consists of a precipitation gauge that collects total annual precipitation of the snow toll site and sensors for temperature and snow depth. Snow depth sensors work by bouncing a signal off the snow pillow to read the distance and measure snow depth. The ground truth marker surrounds the snow pillow to guide scientists about where to take their measurements. We have the equipment shelter, also called the equipment shack, that houses the sensors and data logger equipment. The solar panel powers the site because there is no electricity in the mountains, and the radio antenna is used for radio communication transmission. This tower that you see has a solar radiation and wind sensor too. Every snow tail site has a small shelter or equipment shack that collects data from many different sources. One example, as you can see here, is data from the precipitation gauge. These precipitation gauges are used to capture precipitation in any form, rain, snow, or sleet, and they're sized according to their average annual precipitation at each site. A surrounding circle of specially designed windshields, as you can see here with these spikes, is mounted around the gauge opening to reduce wind effect on the measurements. The snow pillow is a heavy-duty bladder filled with an environmentally friendly anti-freeze solution. The weight of accumulating snow on top increases the pressure on the fluid. Automatic measuring devices connected by hoses from the pillow to the inside of the equipment shack convert the weight of the snow into a reading of the snow water equivalent, the actual amount of water in a given volume of snow. Here we have a closer look of the tower with multiple sensors attached. We use a shielded thermistor to measure air temperature. A thermistor is a resistance thermometer, or a resistor whose resistance is dependent on temperature. An ultrasonic snow depth gauge is mounted above the maximum snowpack level. It's pretty accurate, but needs to be verified with in-person measurements on a precisely scheduled rotation. Other climate sensors include wind speed and direction, solar radiation, and relative humidity. Snow tow sites are solar powered. These small solar panels and a battery help the site last for up to a month, should there be a stretch of days with limited sunlight. The antenna is used for radio transmission. Here we have soil monitoring equipment. This measures the soil temperature, moisture, and salinity. Data about soil temperature is important information for predicting forest fires later in the summer. If the soil is really dry, then the surface will be more combustible and more prone to forest fires. What is a snow course? A transect of data points. Over here, we've got markers that mark these data points. The distance between these two is around 30 feet. The idea is to come back to this exact same point with a team of hydrologists month after month and verify the data that is being gathered remotely by all of the sensors. The question is, how do scientists get here? These measurements, which are taken monthly from January to June, require surveyors to travel by helicopter, skis, or as pictured here, by snowmobile. Sounds like a fun job. When taking a manual snow core sample, the surveyor ensures the tube is clear of all snow and soil and uses a strong, lightweight graded aluminum tube and a weighing scale. One surveyor measures the snow depth while the other records data. Snow depth is measured by pushing the tube down through the snowpack to the ground surface and extracting a core. After clearing out the soil from the tube, the surveyor determines the amount of water in the snowpack by weighing the tube with its snow core and subtracting the weight of the empty tube. An average of all samples taken is calculated and used to represent the snow course. In this mini webinar, we have learned about how a snow tail site works. As you know, water resource managers depend on this data and so do we. My question is, what does all of this data look like on paper? What different stories can the data reveal?